Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Vincent and this is another quick beginner's tutorial where I want to speak about the formats in Sima 4D. And let's start with our first object. So this is the shape which I created for this tutorial which is kind of funny. Let's recreate this bend effect and the bend is one of the easiest and most common ones. So I will hide my test and we'll start from scratch. That's my shape and on the right side there is this purple symbol where you can select all your different deformers and we want to start with the bend deformer so let's select the bend deformer put it into the bend object itself click fit to parent which already gives us a nice frame but i want my frame a little bit smaller like a little cube let's move it in place and you can see that i have still selected my scale tool so if i move left and right my object gets bigger and smaller but we want to switch to the move tool so let's move the object a little bit down and let's select the bend again and let's say we want to bend it by 50 degrees and as a next thing i do want to keep my length so my legs stay the same length and now i only need to switch my orientation so you can press r for rotate and then you can freely move around the bend deformer and see what it is doing Sometimes it's doing weird things, but I know that we just need to move it 180 degrees on the B X. And then as the next thing, let's go to frame zero and set a keyframe on the angle and just click on this little icon. And then on frame 50, you set another keyframe with 360 degrees. So we have now 50 frames and the animation is looping. This is a nice little start. And now depending on your wishes or needs, you can make the band smaller. So you have a sharp or you make it bigger and they let's continue with the next one which is the formula effector. And I have a little setup here and this is my wiggle setup. So again, let's duplicate this. By the way, I'm pressing control on the keyboard so I can just drag and duplicate, drop it and let's hide the original one. And again, we have our default object. Click on the right side and go to formula. Let's move the formula effector back into our object. And the object is way too big. You can see the cube of the effector is huge. This is 400 centimeters. So let's make it way smaller because also our object is quite small. Let's start with 22. You can press E for the move tool and just move the formula effector around and see if you will like a position. For example, if you move the object more to the back, it's doing this interesting motion. And if you change the scale of the object, you can see that the formula effector is now mapped on another scale or if you make it big then we have to motion we can make it smaller this looks cool then in the formula there are many formulas online but we will leave this at default just keep in mind the this parameter you can make smaller which is the speed and this one is the amplitude so we can i don't know make this way bigger it's a huge amplitude and slower but we can also make it quick and give it a small amplitude or so tiny quick little waves now let's keep it like this and as a last thing, there is a thing in all effectors. You can click on the right side to the fields. And with fields, you can add direct effectors, which is really great. For example, I'm selecting the first one, a linear field here. I'm pressing T to scale down my field. And I'm pressing R to rotate everything. And let's move it by 90 degrees. Let's move it in position. Now I scale down not only the linear field, I also scale down the formula field. That's why we have tiny, tiny ripples on it, which kind of looks interesting. But we want to go back to, I don't know, shape. Now only select the formula field and let's move it in position. And now we have a transition between non-motion and motion. And the formula field is a bit distracting. So if you press Alt and click on these little dots here then we are hiding both of them at the same time so the linear field is hidden now this looks pretty cool but you can of course play around with the settings or you can also change your axis so we are moving now on the x or on the z axis i'm happy with this so let's continue the next effect is a bit more specific and you can use the explosion VFX effect to interestingly cut out pieces of an existing mesh and also give the mesh some density. If we then put this in a subdivision surface, this looks pretty cool. But again, let's start from scratch. I have my default object. And by the way, the shortcut for showing this lines is NB. You can also click N and then see all the other options which are available like NA or 
and H, but yeah, we want NB now to see the polygon line. Back to the deformers. On the right side again, let's go to Explosion FX. Put it into our object here. Let's scale that down. And again, I press T for scale and now E for move. And let's let's put it like this. Then in the Explosion FX, there are many things to adjust. Interestingly, you, you can go to the thickness and let's make the object thicker so that's pretty cool that we can directly adjust how thick it is this is also too much let's go with 0.5 i don't know feel free to play around with all the other values i didn't do anything here for now i just selected the object and now we want to apply something else it's a subdivision surface but i do want to apply something else you just click here for a subdivision surface select it put it in place and put it in here or i will undo this and i will quickly show you another technique if you also press alt and then click on subdivision surface the subdivision surface or like anything is directly put in the right position so this is looking cool and now again you can just move around your effects here or i don't know scale it down and you have something interesting nice. let's hide this guy again and continue with the next one this is also super easy but very often needed is an object to move along the spline it's moving kind of fast because we only have 50 frames but i will show you how to do that so let's keep the spline so we don't have to redraw this but everything is in what in a new null because i want the spline and the object in the same null then let's click here again and go to spline wrap and in the spline wrap we now need to select the spline where we want to wrap on then we need to change our orientation that's the axis so I think it's the y-axis. This looks also pretty cool, but the mode fit to spline is mostly not the right one. So keep the length is what I usually use. Now let's go at frame zero with a keyframe of zero and our 50 frames to 100. As I said, this is going to be pretty fast. Just one little add-on to this one. You can also animate size and rotation and things like this. And I want to go to spline rotation and just select one of the keyframes and move it up. That means that over the time, our object is now going to spin around and it's going to make a 360 so an extra layer to make the animation more interesting our last one in our quick beginner deformer series let's have a look onto the jiggle deformer let's go back to frame zero and see what i did there and i want to give myself more frames so Let's type in 100 here. And i have a close like jumping little guy here so let's redo this again i have a color here so if you click on color you can assign any color you like to your objects sometimes it's nice to have them in different colors go to your deformers select the jiggle deformer and this time we don't want to press alt we want to press control and now it's in the same hierarchy but it no needs to go inside here we need to adjust it the first part we want to do is force and you can apply new forces into the jiggle deformer which is nice and we want to add some turbulence to the scene and i'm pressing shift c to open the command line and now i can also search and type for things and now let's search turbulence and put it into the jiggle and for the turbulence i want i don't know something like this 20 to 20 let's go again into the jiggle the force let's again go into the jiggle deformer select the turbulence and drag and drop it into the force let's see if already something's happening Ah uh, yeah, let's turn the turbulence off again and let's have a look on the jumping part. So I'll delete the keyframes again so you see what I'm doing here. Because this is a bit more beginner friendly, I really try to do every step here. Let's click on the left side on this button here. That helps us with animation. Let's make this window a bit bigger. And I want to create one keyframe on frame 0 and on frame... Eight, another keyframe so my object is now moving up and instead of having to repeat this all the time i can select the jiggle deformer now we want to also switch our view to the f curve view and in the f curve view you can also navigate like in this menu before you can press one or three you don't need but with one and two you can navigate through the scene here let's select both of our keyframes and if your it might be that your default is on spline minus on linear because I like to do this manually, but you can also change the mode on top of here. So let's select easy ease. Then let's select the last keyframe and there's a cool function. So go to functions, track after, oscillate after. It means cinema is always repeating what these two keyframes are doing. So 
is moving up and down and up and down. And for example, if I just change one parameter in my two keyframes, the animation is totally different. And that's pretty cool because you only have to work on two keyframes and not on all the other one though. Yeah, something like this. Now back to the Jiggle Deformer. We can hide our keyframes now by pressing this button again. I just activated the Jiggle Deformer and the turbulence. So now the object is moving up and down and is also affected by the turbulence. To the turbulence, I think the strength is a bit too much. And also in the Jiggle Deformer, you can apply and adjust many things. For example, the stiffness. If we go low, the object is really affected by all the moving and the turbulence. If we take a very high value, like 95%, you see that there's less deformation. So probably something in the middle is, is good for us. So there's a bit of deformation, but still it's following the keyframes and its shape. And you can play around, for example, with the structure. So how does it look on zero or on 100%? And I like it if it's more structural, so we get more of these cloth fold likes here. And we are now at the end of this little beginner's guide where I showed you some of the deformers in Cinema 4D. So I hope to see you in part two or in the second video or what comes after this. I don't know yet. So have a good time and bye bye.